Welcome to the new NPTEL course, Scanning Technology and Value Addition of Seafood. This course is offered by Kerala University of Fisheries and Ocean Studies. The two faculty members will be handling this course, myself, uh, Dr. Maya Raman. I am an associate professor in the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Ocean Science and Technology, KUFOS. And uh, another faculty, Dr. Abhilash Shasidharan. He is an assistant professor, Department of Fish Processing Technology, Faculty of Fishery Science. So, we will also join us in the course. And the outline of this course, it is divided into 11 parts. And first, in the first part, we will be discussing about concept of canning and we will also give a brief introduction. And in the second part, history, how, the, how it evolved. So, history of canning technology will be discussed. And in the third part, we will be discussing about the containers that are, that, that are used in canning and what are the properties of these canning mat uh, materials or the containers that are used in canning. And in fourth, we will be discussing about the canning process in general. And in fifth, we will discuss about the microorganisms associated with or the spoilages associated with canning and why we are concentrating on Clostridium specifically for canning. We will also discuss about thermal process calculations in part 6 and in 7, we will be discussing about the spoilages of canning materials or the cans and how it can be detected. And in 8th, we will be discussing about the canning procedures because canning procedure from product to product it differs. So, we will be discussing about individual products and the procedures involved and the standards that are involved for each process. And in part 10, we will be discussing about the value addition and in 11, we will discuss about the quality standards of seafood and the regulations associated with it. Now, coming to the overview, so here let us see what all things will come under this head. Uh, in the introduction and concept of canning technology, we will discuss about the introduction, definition and concept of canning. We will also discuss about the different containers that are used and 5 M's and we will also briefly discuss about the canning processes and advantages of canning over other processing methods and this is a picture of a retort and uh, this is used for uh, sterilization. Then in history of canning technology, we will discuss about the evolution, how the canning technology evolved and who are the different people who work behind it and what are their contributions. And also we will discuss about containers, that is in part 3, we will discuss about the containers and their properties. Well, the classification of the containers will be discussed and what are the advantages and disadvantages, why we moved from different materials and why currently we are using aluminium cans. So, those will be discussed. We will also discuss about the quality parameters of different containers or the materials that are used in developing containers and how to evaluate the properties or the parameters of the containers and what is the manufacturing process, how the containers are manufactured. These things will also be detailed and in this picture it shows the different cans or the materials that can be used for canning. In part 4, the canning process, we will be discussing about the step by step process of the technology. So, each steps that are involved in the canning process that will be discussed and what is the significance or what is the importance of each step, why we are doing each step that also will be discussed. And what are the different machineries that are involved in the canning process, this will also be dealt in detail. And what are the different quality issues or by running the process we may encounter some issues or some troubleshoots. So, this may be associated with quality or it may be with the machineries. So, the how to solve, how to troubleshoot these things that will be discussed under this head. And uh, what are the advancements that has happened in the scanning process that will also be discussed in this part. Now, this is a picture of a retorting machine or the canning machine. We have this is a immersion water immersion retort and you can see here this is uh, the place where the retorting is done that is scanning is done and this is the door which will be opened and the racks will be placed in the rack will be having containers. So, here you can see different racks being assembled and this is the overhead tank where the water is stored and uh, you can see here the gauges even you can see in this next picture you can see the gauges here which will indicate the temperature and pressure inside the 
overhead tank so this uh, water is uh, heated and it is passed into the uh, retorting machine through the pipes and this will help in retorting and this is the air chamber where the uh, compressed air is maintained and these are the indicators or the uh, screen which shows how the machine is working or what are the stages so that can be seen here this is a compressor a, a picture of compressor that is used to compress the air and this is another retort uh, that is steam retort it's a smaller version and uh, again you can open this door and place the cans inside or retort pouches can also be re uh, retorted so that can be placed inside and you can also see gauges and other meters here which helps in understanding what is the temperature and pressure inside the retort so this all this starts working when uh, the machinery is in operation so this is uh, the inside of the retort when you open the door this is how it looks like so this here you can see the probes we have two probes here we can also have one more probe actually so three probes one will be put outside and two probes will be placed inside the can which will indicate the temperature at the cold point so these probes are placed inside the cans they are placed at the cold point and uh, they will indicate what is the temperature so these are used for thermal evaluation and we calculate different uh, heat penetration parameters that is j value h value the lag factor etc so this will be discussing in the respective parts and uh, this uh, picture it shows the trays over which the cans are placed and then this trays they will be pushed or they will be slanted inside the retort and then the door will be sealed properly and then we will switch on the equipment. So this is a seaming machine double seamer and you can see here a can is placed and you have two chucks here which is which helps in double seaming actually we have this if you look at the figure here this is how the double seaming happens so in the single seam or the first seam the chuck it will bring the hooks together and it's a complete hook formation and it will be compressed in the uh, so if you look at the can over here there's a hook like structure in the edges so over which the lid is placed and uh, it this is a body this is the body part so this part is reflected here in the figure and this is the lid part and in the single seaming this hook is formed and it is completely uh, compressed or complete hook is formed seamed sec uh, second time so double seaming so to get this complete hook we are doing double seaming and for that we are using this double seamer or can seamer for the pouches we usually go for vacuum packaging or we can go for a regular sealing machine so this is a vacuum packaging machine where the air inside the pack it is uh, removed and it is completely vacuum inside so this is how the pouch is placed in the vacuum uh, sealer and it is sealed over here and the entire air inside the uh, pouch will be removed completely yeah, this is a probe over here. The cables are connected to the probe and this probe will be inserted inside the cans and the tip of the probe will be at the cold point. It will indicate uh, the temperature. That cold point is the last point where the temperature reaches and the end. So uh, what is the temperature at the cold point? This will be recorded by the E-Lab. This equipment is called E-Lab. It records all the temperatures. So for statistical analysis, we take uh, three values. 3 or 2 or 3 values so you can, probes are connected at this point and the values will be recorded in the in the software and these will be used to calculate the heat penetration values and in part 5 we have uh, bacteriology that is uh, microorganisms that are uh, that can be seen in canning industry so first we will classify the foods based on their pH and what are the different microbial strains. The major microbial strains that are associated with spoilages and we also will discuss about the reference microorganisms and that is Clostridium which is taken as a reference microorganism in case of canning so that, uh, that also will be discussed and uh, what are the spoilages and health risks that, that is caused or by these microorganisms will be uh, discussed. In uh, part 6, we will be discussing about heat penetration characteristics, the thermal process indicators like D value, Z value, F value, Cook value. We will also discuss about 5D and 12D and what is the lethal rate. So these will be discussed in under this uh, part and uh, graphical representation on how to evaluate it through the graph. These will also be taught 
and in the seventh part we will be discussing about the spoilage indicators uh, what are the different kind of spoilages seen in canning and what are the corrective measures to to prevent this spoilages and in part 8 we will be discussing about item wise uh, seafood canning and each steps will be uh, discussed individually and uh, the canning uh, how it changes from products to product that variety of different products will be taken and what are the changes that happen in the processing that will be discussed and uh, we will also discuss about the pre-processing methods so before processing the product need to be processed so that uh, we can assure its quality and longer shelf life so pre-processing will also be discussed in detail and we'll also discuss about the additives that are added in the can to improve its flavor and eatability or palatability uh, these uh, additives they also improve the shelf life of the product and in part 9 we'll discuss about the SOPs in the canning industry and we'll see it individually each product wise and in part 10 we will discuss about the value addition and under this head we will discuss about composition, nutritional quality, mus muscle structure and spoilages of seafood then uh, we will also discuss about the methods of preservation that can be adopted to increase the shelf life and in the last uh, part we will discuss about the quality parameters that is national and international standards of seafood products. So this is an overview of the course and uh, what will be discussed under this courses. This slide it shows uh, different value added products that can be developed from the byproducts of the industry it will include the gut content, the head region, the fins, the unwanted parts which are not used in the food these will be thrown as byproducts generally we dump it or then or else it is given as feed to animals so but then uh, these are also rich in many biotic components and they also have a lot of functional properties so for these reasons we can utilize these uh, to develop biotic products develop other functional products so some of these can be used as nutraceuticals also so the first picture is of fish moss fish moss it is uh, basically the air bladder uh, which is used for breathing in case of fish it is generally thrown and it or discarded it can be used to develop fish moss and fish moss is dried or treated air bladder this can be further treated to develop icing glass and uh, this icing glass they are used for the clarification of the beers beers generally it is developed from the fruits or vegetables after fermentation so it has a turbidity because of the solubles which are suspended in the liquid these solubles are clarified and it is made clear with the help of icing glass we have chitin here chitin is developed from the shrimp uh, shell or the crustacean shell we also have chitin in fungus and uh, usually for commercial purpose the chitin is extracted from the shells and this chitin is deacetylated to form as a chitosan which has a lot of benefits are there for this chitosan in the medical field and these are used to develop sutures they are also used for many other purposes and uh, for developing packaging materials chitin chitosan they are rich in glycosaminoglycan so they have the medicinal properties are very high so you can also see wafers here and shark fin rays is a very expensive product it is used for preparing soups usually Chinese people or the Asian countries they prefer a shark fin rays and silage is a biofertilizer it is fermented product it is developed using the byproducts or the waste parts which are not utilized so these are some of the products which we have just displayed here we will discuss these things in detail in the respective sections now we will go to the next session that is part 1 which will be handled by Dr. Abhilash Shashidharan and sir will be giving an introduction about the canning and its definition and how the canning came into existence or how we started using this technique for preservation he will be discussing about those things. Thank you.